welcome back to Peli FM 95.0 and Commuter FM and um, a very good morning to all our Peli FM and Commuter FM listeners and also our beloved community of Lodium and surrounding areas Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu on this international al Quds day now Shamir you have got uh, over a decade of experience in the field of community-based work. Obviously, there are a lot of challenges. Now, the Institute for Islamic Services, can you just give us an idea on some of the methods that you use to be a solution to the people in the communities that you serve? Yes, yes. Uh, very important is that the Institute for Islamic Services, uh, we at the Institute for Islamic Services, we obviously look for solutions to the problems faced by the community, whether it be education, whether it be upliftment, whether it be basic needs, mm. like uh, your daily food, your daily bread. Mm. And at the Institute for Islamic Services, we do address these issues uh, in uh, Lodium, in Atrichwell, Lotus Garden, Pretoria West, the Pretoria CBD, Centurion, etc. And we have been doing this uh, for many years. The Institute for Islamic Services, obviously it's a very old organization with a, a long track record and is doing this for many years. And we do things, for example, like we do your monthly grocery hampers, uh, grocery vouchers, where we help over 320 families in these areas with the basic necessities of food, mm. which is a very important project of ours. Then we have an education program where we cater for uh, children who are obviously from a disadvantaged background, and we provide our standard education uh, national standard education for them mm. so that they may uh, succeed when they go to institutions like schools and colleges etc and what that coupled with that we have the skills development center at the institute for islamic services where we feel we cannot only give to people but we want to empower them and give them skills mm. where they can stand on their own two feet and they can provide for their families mm -hmm. so in that it is a good solution that we uh, implement at the Institute for Islamic Services. And then also, we have various projects such as uh, the one that we are doing now, our seminars and our message to the communities and stuff, where we want to educate the communities on current events and we want to make communities think and we want them to be proficient as individuals within the community. So we have classes for that, we have symposiums, we have seminars on a regular basis. It's a, on, um, it's a few days a week where we have these kind of um, projects uh, going on and on. Mm. Uh, I see uh, then your passion, or rather the passion of the Institute for Islamic Services to be part and parcel of realizing the freedom of uh, the people of Palestine because all these projects that you are mentioning, the people of Palestine are prevented from access to these and that is an infringement to human rights that is absolutely on spot uh, mr yusuf mustafa absolutely on spot with regards to the assistance that we enjoy within south africa the palestinians cannot enjoy that type of assistance they do not have that type of assistance it is cut off mm. just like uh, it happened in south africa many years ago where assistance was cut off, basic necessities like food and education was cut off. And this is the living reality in Palestine. And as South Africans, as South Africans out there, whatever religion, whatever race you are, we ask a question. What or where did South Africa get assistance or support from in the era of apartheid? Where did they get this assistance from? And the answer is clear. It was from outside countries, whether it be neighboring countries, Mozambique, Tanzania, the DRC, etc. That is where they got support from, was outside. The necessary skills, the necessary training, and obviously the necessary political pressure. And this political pressure is absent, or it's absent at the time we needed the most, or the Palestinians needed the most, which is today. Political influence plays a major role and it can be one of the solutions to end the war, end the bloodshed 
in the region of Palestine and Israel. Mm. And uh, the Honorable Naledi Pandor has made a very good move with regards to this, as we mentioned earlier. Mm. Now, she, she, she's uh, attacked, or not attacked, but uh, she has reprimanded, and uh, without mincing her words, she has called to order the world body, that is the United Nations, in particular the United Nations Security Council. She has called it to order in showing double standards when it comes to the issue of Palestine. She has used the example of Ukraine and Russia. She said Ukraine received maximum support from the United Nations Security Council in particular. And yet, when it comes to Palestine, the issue of oppression has been taking place for over six decades now. And yet, Ukraine and Russia problem is uh, a yesterday's problem, and yet it's, it's receiving maximum partial attention. Yeah, this is a very important point that uh, the Honorable Minister has brought up. And uh, remember something that all wars are not won with weapons. And South Africa is a living example of that. When it comes to the United Nations, they are supposed to be an organization or a body that is there to prevent bloodshed, that is there to find solutions to war, to conflict. But where is the United Nations, where, where are they in this conflict of uh, Palestine and Israel? For the past how many years, 20 or 30 years, the United Nations is ha or has been invisible. Their concentration is elsewhere. Now, as a student of community intervention, I would like to ask the United Nations, what intervention plans have you implemented in the conflict between Israel and Palestine? There are much bloodshed. There are much la loss of lives. What plans did, did, they have, uh, did they implement? And I would also like to challenge the United Nations in what, in what community interventions do they have in the pipeline to intervene in the conflict of the Israel-Palestine situation? Do they even have something on paper to say that they will or they have a plan of intervention which obviously has not come to fruition right now but we challenge them because they were supposed to come with an intervention plan as the United Nations, the power that they were given by the world. You have mentioned uh, 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 something on paper, to have something on paper to, uh, to show that uh, you've got some resolutions or some law that you have uh, implemented we see um, the United Nations Security Council going against its own laws when it comes to favoring, favoring uh, Ukraine in the Ukraine-Russia conflict. And this obviously has shocked the world that how can they go against their own resolution and show partiality and supporting Ukraine instead of uh, coming to the rescue of the uh, of the oppressed people of Palestine. And again, this brings us to, again, uh, the, the world over, particularly the so-called Muslim world, which are silent when it comes to coming to the rescue of the people of Palestine. Like I said uh, earlier, is that uh, it seems that, um, you know, we said at first that this is not a religious thing, this is not an ethnic thing, it's not a race issue. It is a human issue. And it seems that the world, more especially the United Nations, that they do not have the passion for human beings, but rather they want to serve. They want to serve a or the powers. They want to serve the powers that be. So they are placing the powers that be before human beings. And this is a problem and it is obviously a conflict of interest within the United Nations, they are not taking care of their primary job. So, of course, we as individuals in South Africa, across the world, we will ask the question. That question will always be raised. Is the United Nations 
protecting the rights of human beings or are they serving the powers that be? What is their key interest here? And that is a question that will always be raised when it comes to conflict in the world, more especially the conflict uh, and the massacres that's happening in the region of uh, Palestine. Mm. The issue, uh, in conclusion, Shamir, because I see time is not on our side, in conclusion, we have a very complex situation, very complex indeed, because if you look at uh, the ideology that runs uh, Israel at the uh, present moment, the apartheid state of Israel, the ideology that runs the, the, uh, the, the affairs there is uh, based on Zionism, which is a very complex uh, 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 ideology. And now Zionism also uses religion, because I see you keep on referring to uh, the, 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 the fact that uh, this is not a religious problem. But the Zionists in Israel, they are using religion. For the unsuspecting Christians, they are using religion to fight their battle. Now, how are they doing this? They uh, rally support from Christians by saying the right for Israelis to occupy Palestine is biblically based. So by so doing, by bringing God into the whole equation, they are saying Christians must fight on the side of Zionism and therefore religion is brought, whether we like it or not, religion is brought into the play here. So there is a fine line between Zionism and religion here. How now do we make people aware that they should separate the two, Christianity and Zionism? So, like, I, like you've correctly mentioned, that uh, I've appealed to the people out there that this should not be misinterpreted as a religious issue. Mm. And you have obviously correctly said that uh, there are people out there who are using religion to, to build on their agendas mm. or to use it for their agendas and the outcome, etc. So, the issue here is that if you look at the scriptures and you look at the books, there are no scriptures or there's no religion that is asking or commanding for war, unnecessary war, right? So by them doing this here, they are corrupting the minds, they are corrupting the texts, they are corrupting the social beliefs of people in the area or in the region or even in the world. To go and fight an unholy war. Mm. To go and be oppressors. So the message to those people who are on the side of Israel, and we know there are people on the side of this one and on the side of that one, is that read your texts correctly. Sit and consult with your leaders correctly. And make up your own mind. Is human life worth the land or the resources that people are after is human life worth it we must ask our, ourselves uh, this question we must be empathic when we wa we must have empathy and we must be empathic when we ask ourselves this question would we like something like this being done to us does a real true religion promote such things does religion put the lives of human beings behind resources and land and ideas? This is a very important question we need to ask ourselves before we go out there and become oppressors. We need to appeal to our human inside us. We need to appeal our, to our logic inside of us. It is there. It is buried in there. But we need to do that before we go out there and take up arms and plumage and appropriate land, etc., etc., we need to ask ourselves that question. Mm. So even those who want to, uh, who are on the side of Israel, we need to ask ourselves this question as well. Is it necessary for us to take lives or to oppress people for resources, for land, to promote our ideas? Is it worth it? That is what only those people can answer. Only yourself, inside yourself, you can answer.
and nobody else. Mm. Well, there's uh, uh, Shamir Adam, who is uh, an expert when it comes to human rights advocacy, community intervention, as well as strategic leadership. He is currently sitting for his master's in uh, uh, a master's in uh, community mental health sciences with focus discipline in human rights advocacy as I've uh, said. In conclusion, uh, we know today uh, there are different places whereby you can partake in peaceful demonstrations or protests around the world. Now um, in Pretoria we've got several. Yes, in Pretoria we have uh, after, after Juma Salah, so for the people out there who want to uh, join, uh, whether you be Christian, whether you be Jew, whatever you be, may be, you are welcome to join uh, the one in the city of Tsoane, uh, right here in the capital city. We have one at uh, the Israeli embassy, which is on uh, Linwood Road. That is, um, I can give you the address there very it's quickly. 428, uh, 428, 428 uh, Kings, uh, Kingsway Highway. Right. That is outside the Israeli embassy. That's the that's one. So the other one is happening at the Masjid Al Haq at the entrance of Lodium in uh, Pretoria, um, or the city of Tswane. Uh, that is going to kick off at twenty five past twelve, where we would have a, a nice uh, program there regarding the issue of uh, the Palestinians. So you can join us there. That is at twenty five past twelve, uh, not far from you. And then we have another one also around the same time which is at the city council of uh, Johannesburg, which is uh, in Bramfontein. Yes, yes. Uh, that's correct. So you guys uh, out there can join us at any three of these locations. Like I said, at the 428 Kingsway Highway uh, in Tswane, at Majid al Haq in Lodium, the city of Tswane as well, and then in Bramfontein at the city of uh, uh, Johannesburg at the municipality. That is uh, uh, the city council. Yeah, 163 Boulevard. Uh. Yes, 163 uh, Boulevard Avenue. That is in uh, Johannesburg. So we look forward to seeing you guys at the demonstrations and obviously to show solidarity uh, towards the people of Palestine. Remember, as South Africans, uh, we did go through the same state and we needed assistance from outside, all those individuals. And very important is that we as South Africans had moral support. If it might not have been financial support, etc., it was moral support. And South Africans will tell you, those who are in the struggle will tell you how important the moral support was uh, for them to continue uh, towards defeating the apartheid regime. Mm. Well, uh, uh, Shamir Adam, would like to thank you very much for availing your time to appear on this uh, special Ramadan show on Peli FM and Komita. FM would like to thank you very much and will will hopefully engage you in some future programs. I thank all of you out there as well as I, I thank the people in the studio and uh, my host uh, Yusuf Mustafa, Mr. Yusuf Mustafa. I thank all of you guys for having me on the show. Thank you. And uh, to all our listeners, Jazakallah for lending us your ear and from my side, Yusuf Mustafa, till we meet again at the protest in uh, Masjid al Haq. Israeli Embassy as well as in Bramfontein. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.